Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the Master Race. Today we're going to learn to overclock. First things first, going to come to the bottom right. Change your date and time. Change your date and time. And now you can come over here and overclock to your heart's content. I do have to warn you, this will actually cause you to time travel. And if you're not a trained time traveler and don't have a trained time traveling consultant on hand, this is not something to fuck around with. It's very dangerous. You could get yourself hurt. To go back to the present, all you got to do is come over here to internet time, because the internet always knows the correct time. Hit our change settings. And you can see over here there's a various list of many time travel servers you can get in contact with. I like this one. It seems to work. I'm going to hit update now. Just got to wait for that to finish. It's going to say that an error occurred. This is because time traveling is inherently dangerous. I'm going to hit OK and OK. And there you go. You're back to the present. Now, in all seriousness, how about we learn to overclock our graphics cards? On the right side, you know how to reset your time now. Anyway, you're going to boot up a program called MSI Afterburner. I'm going to put a link in the description as to where you can get this sucker. Pretty simple installation process. You're going to download a zip. You're going to run the executable inside the zip. If you can't do that, God help you. Alrighty. Now you're looking at this and you're going, What the fuck is that? What the fuck is this? the fuck are you? What are these things? Well, it's okay. In all basicness, because this is not an in-depth tutorial, I'm just going to give you the real basics on how to overclock so that anybody who wants to try it out can just get a start on. You're going to take your clock speed here, which is for me 1215 megahertz, and you're just going to move it up. Right now it's at plus 25. We can move this further. We could go plus 50, plus 100. We could go fucking plus 1000 if we're on crack. Uh, by the way, that's not going to work. This will crash. And that's actually the goal today, is what we're going to do is we're going to start from zero, and we're just going to move up our clock speed until we reach the highest thing that we can get to without crashing. Basically what you're doing is, imagine that your card is a guy riding a bike. It's pedaling away on the bike, doing so much work, and there may be different cards that are clocked at the same speed, but different cards are better than others. They might be more efficient. The more efficient card will get more done with a single clock cycle. So even though there's cards from 8 years ago clocked at 1000 MHz, and there's cards today clocked at 1000 MHz, the card from today is going to go like 50 miles when it does one pedal. Whereas the card from 8 years ago, well, it might go 3 miles with one pedal. And the Xbox, well, it might get out of the driveway. Anyway, to overclock, we're going to need something to benchmark with. This is going to be a tool that will bust your graphics card is going to work it as hard as it possibly can until it crashes. Now this is okay. It's not going to break it. Not going to set your house on fire. Not going to burn down. Everything will be fine. Breathe in. Breathe out. It's okay. All you're going to do is push it until it crashes. When it crashes, you're going to say, that's okay, buddy. Just take a rest. I'm going to pull you down a little bit. I'm going to try again. So right now, first things you want to do is, well, make sure that your default thing is stable. Take your favorite benchmark. I like the Unigen Heaven benchmark. Maybe some of you like Valley. Uh, maybe some of you like the Furry Butthole. Uh, that would be Furmark. Some of you might like uh, oh, 3D Mark, whatever, Fire Strike, Ninja Fighting Warriors, whatever the fuck. And that's all good for you. Really, you can pick anything. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that it works with SLI or Crossfire if that happens to be applicable to you and make sure that you aren't getting bottlenecked by your CPU when running it. Uh, for example, in Fire Strike, it may try to uh, get silly on you because maybe you have a pretty decent card but kind of a shitty CPU, and when you get to the CPU test, it's just not going to want to let you go any further. So just get something that's appropriate for you. Use your brain. Part of the PC Master Race. I know that you already know how to use your brain, so come on. All you got to do is start up your benchmark. You're going to hit Run. And it's as simple as that. It's going to bring you in. And you're going to see various things. If you're running Furmark, you're going to see a giant furry cat butthole. If you're running Fire Strike, you're going to see a bunch of options. You're going to want to start up the most hardcore one. Now, no matter what you do, you're going to want to make sure that you select the most hardcore that you can without getting, like, 10 frames per second. Uh, because if you're getting such a low FPS rate that like your card can barely handle it, it will actually take matters into its own hands and try to downclock itself so that it doesn't completely burn to death. And this is actually bad for testing stability because you want your card to stay at the high clock rate. If it doesn't stay at a high clock rate, then you can't find out if that clock rate is stable or not. 
So you're going to want to hit whatever the hell your benchmarking button is. Mine is F9. It might be something different for you. It's just going to run through through a bunch of pretty scenes. Watch them if you want to. Uh, you really don't have to watch them, but you should, because even if you don't crash, something can happen called artifacting, where you see pretty pink little sparkles and weird colors and shiny glittery awesomeness and little weird like geometry glitching out. You don't want that. Your five-year-old sister will probably love it. You're, you're not going to think it's so great. Now, don't think that you're sitting there right now like, huh, well, I see this benchmark, I'm not going to waste my time with that, I'm just going to go play Skyrim on the Ultra Max settings. Well, that's the reason that we're using a benchmark, is because some games like Skyrim, and maybe you're fucking, fucking around with indie games, playing Fez or whatever, it's not going to pu push your system to the limits that it needs to be pushed to to find out if it's stable. So, you're going to go through a number of scenes, it's going to take you through that, Eventually you're going to finish up, it'll give you a score, say good job buddy, you did it, here's how your score did, great, exit out, quit. Okay, what do we do now? Well, you're going to come over here, take your core clock, and we're going to offset it. All you're doing here is just telling your pedaler, hey, pedal a little faster buddy, see if we can get a move on here. I think I could probably do 25 megahertz safely. That seems like a pretty reasonable jump to make. For some of you, it may be more. For some of you, it may be less. Once you find out where you crash, you're going to really start fine-tuning this. But for now, we don't really know, so we'll just do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to go run the benchmark again. Okay, great. I made it through. What do I do now? Okay, you're going to come back here. Okay, let's boost that up to 50. Okay, great. I ran the benchmark again. It worked fine. All right, come back here. Now boost that up to 75. Okay, great, it worked. Now what I do? Well, I'll go run the benchmark again. And you're just gonna keep on doing this. Keep on boosting, keep on clocking. What do we do? We clock, clock, clock. Oh, 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 oh I love to clock. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Anyway, I'm gonna take this and, oh shit. Shit, 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 we crashed. It's the end of the world, I'm gonna die. You're not gonna die, it's okay. Like I said, breathe in, breathe out. Take your core clock down. So you're at 75 before. Uh, well, how about we give 60 a try? I know that was stable. Or just take your last stable overclock. So if you were stable at 50 and you're not stable at 75, well, how about you go back down to 50? Now what you're going to do is start boosting by smaller increments. Uh, well, we'll try 61. We'll try 65. We'll try 67. We'll try 69. Hey, 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 hey. Kek. Um... And then you're just going to keep going through, and eventually you're going to find probably just that perfect point. And this is what overclocking is all about. You want to find that pretty little perfect point where you're at just a high enough clock speed that things are stable. You don't get any artifacting. Things don't die. They don't crash. But it's still fast. This is good. This is the goal. Once you've found this point, you're pretty much done with the tutorial. Like, that is all you needed to do. Congrats. You're an overclocker. But now I'm going to talk about some more advanced things that you can do to kind of help yourself out. Right here you can see you have a power limit. Now you may have noticed over on the left you have something that's called a base clock and a boost clock. Well, what the hell is that? Basically, your card can decide, huh, well, we're going to 1200 megahertz, and that's working out okay. So why don't we go a little higher? We could probably get up to close to 1400 and not kill ourselves. So it's going to try to raise up there if it's under a certain threshold. What is that threshold? Right here. It's your power limit and your temperature limit. It's going to go up and it's going to say, okay, have you reached 110% power or 100%? You can set this wherever you want. See, now it's saying, okay, well, if we reach 79 degrees Celsius, we're going to underclock ourselves. We're going to perform a little slower so we don't burn to death. I can safely say for that uh, 700 and like 900 series users on NVIDIA, you can safely boost this all the way up. It's okay. You can reach 90 degrees Celsius without killing yourself. It's fine. Things won't melt. You, you'll be good to go. If you're on AMD or if you have older cards, I, I can't help you. I have no idea. You're going to have to individually research and find out what your temperature limit is and what you're comfortable with. If you don't think your card should be getting up to 80, then don't let it get up to 80. Now, this is a more guaranteed method than setting your fan speed because even though you can set your fans to go faster once you reach a certain speed or a certain temperature, 
you may find that that's still not doing. It's trying, maybe it even goes up to 100%, or maybe you throttled it so that it could only go up to 70% fan speed, yet your card's about to kill itself. By having this temperature limit, that makes sure that it's allowed to downclock itself and perform at a slower rate so that your biker doesn't fall off his bike and get fucked. So, if you're NVIDIA, go ahead, take this all the way up. It'll be great. It'll probably help you reach a little bit of a higher place with your core clock. Uh, as for memory clock, I know I didn't touch on this. You can boost this by little bit bigger amounts. You can take this up to maybe plus 100 increments. Go 100, uh, 200. Oh shit, I saw some artifacting. Let's go 150. Okay, that's about good. 155. I'm sorry, 155. Well, let's go 160. Oh shit, I saw artifacts. Okay, we'll pull it back to 155 and we'll just live there. Uh, what you're going to find with your memory clock is that it really doesn't affect things. You're not, you definitely won't see any higher FPS by adjusting your memory clock unless you have really low clocked memory. And honestly, you'll barely see any results at all, really. I mean, like, anytime the textures need to load or move around, they will load and move around faster. But generally, you're not going to make a huge difference fucking around with this. It, it's not going to do much. Another thing that you can do to help with your overclocking is, well, when you're doing this, your cars are going to get hot, and when they get hot, well, as we said before, we have our temperature limit here. If we get up to that, we reach our temperature limit, well, we're going to downclock ourselves. We don't want that. We're overclockers. So you can come over here to fan and enable your own little fan curve. So maybe you keep getting up to your benchmark and you keep getting up to 80 degrees and you're going, oh shit keep getting up to 80 degrees and it's throttling itself. I'm okay with having a little bit louder fans. That's okay. Like, I, I, I want the extra performance. Well, you can just take this little thing here, drag this all over the place. And really, you have a lot of control as to what you can do with this. You could drag your thing so that your fans don't move at all when you're down low and then suddenly decide, hey, once we reach 50 degrees, I want this to spike up. Maybe you could have a more gradual curve. Maybe you like something more like this. Maybe a little bit more like that. So, hey, we'll reach 80, and then once we get to 80, we're going to really ramp things up. You can play around with this on your own, find whatever is reasonable for you. I find that generally, if you stay close to off from about 0 to 50, and then slowly let it ramp up from 50 to 70, and then once it reaches 70 and over, you want to boost up to max fan speed. Not max, but somewhere up there, pretty close. And that's going to yield the quietest and then kind of louder, but the best results when you're actually trying to run a game. Uh, there's one more thing that you can mess with for advanced overclockers if you really, really want to take things to the next level. So maybe you've reached your uh, plus 75 clock and you've gone, okay, that's stable. I can't get anywhere beyond this though. I want to go farther. Hell do I do, man? Well, I can come over to your voltage here and move this up a little bit. You could take this to plus one, plus two. You are gonna wanna adjust this in very small amounts. Now, as you can see, I don't even have any options to adjust this right now. There's nothing in the menus, nowhere like, hey, this is grayed out, I can't even click on it. This is for a reason. This is a disclaimer, I am telling you right now, listen to me, you can fuck shit up. You can break your cards if you adjust this. I'm not saying you will. I know with my old 760s, the, the max it would let me adjust is plus 12 megavolts or whatever the hell this is, and that was fine. I could do that. They'd still run great. It helped me with my overclock a little bit. It didn't affect much of anything. Yeah, you can do that, but it's not the case for everyone. I don't know if you just happen to have a bad card or maybe you have a certain type of card that doesn't do well with overclocking. Whatever the case is, I am not responsible if you break yourself. But basically, it's going to be the same process. You boost up your voltage a little bit, run the benchmark, it's stable, move your clock up a little bit, move your clock up, move your clock up, oh shit, I crashed. Okay, move the voltage up a little bit again, and go back to your core clock. Run the clock, run the clock, run the clock, run the clock, boost up, boost up, okay, we crashed again. Move your voltage up some more. This can take you really far. You might actually start to see something significant in your overclocking if you do this, but like I said, this will make your temperatures hotter, make things louder, and it's dangerous. Adjusting your clock, just, just not touching your voltage, just adjusting your clock, that is 
perfectly fine. You cannot hurt anything. If things crash, just do your yoga breaths. It's okay. Breathe in. You'll be fine. Do not fuck with the voltage if you don't want to accept the risks. It will void your warranty, and unless you know what you're doing, it's not something to mess around with. Anyway, that's really it. It's kind of a simple process, and I know this is kind of a long-winded way of saying it all. I just wanted to make sure I got everything in there, though. And this is the basics of how you overclock. If you need any extra help, just ask me, and I'll leave a comment in the video below. Thank you. Bye-bye.